COVID-19 playbook, which provides epidemic prevention guidelines for all stakeholders to participate in the Beijing Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games. Now I would like to give you a brief introduction from three aspects, the background process of compiling the playbook and basic principles of COVID protocols. First, the background of compiling this playbook. Against the backdrop of COVID-19, the Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games in Beijing are facing great pressure and challenges. First, the Chinese government puts people's life first. In line with the overall prevention and control strategy of preventing case importation and domestic resurgence, we have implemented a dynamic zero COVID strategy, which has effectively guaranteed the sustained and stable economic and social development of China and the health and safety of the people. The Beijing Winter Olympics and Paralympics will strictly implement the Chinese government's epidemic prevention principles and requirements and keep the bottom line of epidemic prevention and control in society. Second, the global COVID-19 pandemic, especially the spread of Omicron and other variants, has brought great uncertainty to the global COVID situation. During the Winter Olympic Games, a large number of people from different countries and regions will come to China, increasing the number of people gathered. And the occurrence of a certain number of positive cases will be highly likely to happen. In that context, we, together with the International Olympic Committee and International Paralympic Committee, have formulated and published the playbook. The epidemic prevention content in the playbook should first meet the needs of the Games and reflect the Games-centered, athlete-centered approach to ensure the normal operation of the competition. At the same time, it must comply with China's epidemic prevention and control principles. We hope that all stakeholders can strictly implement the protocols, jointly respond to COVID-19 challenge. We need to make joint efforts to ensure the safety of all participants, the host city, and make it a safe and smooth game. Second, the process of compiling the playbook. The process can be divided into three phases. First is the independent preparation stage of Beijing Winter Olympic Organizing Committee. In the first half of this year, we started the compilation and to present on schedule a streamlined, safe and splendid game we set the six principles of streamlined games, vaccination, closed loop management, effective response to emergencies, combining prevention and control, and taking a holistic and balanced approach. In mid-September, after several rounds of soliciting opinions, playbooks for six categories of stakeholders, version of the Chinese side, were submitted to the IOC for review. The second phase was preparing the first edition of the playbook with the IOC. In early October, we had three video communications with IOC, discussed the timeline and framework of the playbook, agreed to streamline to two playbooks for athletes and team officials and other stakeholders and set the major principles of, stream of strengthening vaccination, pre-departure COVID prevention measures, closed loop management, NAT test and emergency disposal principles. Nine rounds of intensive consultations were held to discuss the text item by item and consensus was reached before it was released on October 25th. After the release, we held 
nine briefings for all stakeholders, and all parties generally express their understanding and recognition for the playbook. In the recent international test events, we strictly followed the standards and requirements that will be adopted for the actual game, and the playbook and the measures have proven effective. Third, compiling the second edition with the IOC. Since November the 5th, we have held 14 consultation and review meetings with the IOC on the revision. While keeping the basic framework of the first edition, we have absorbed the opinions and suggestions of various stakeholders and taken into account issues discovered in the test events. As for the NAT processes and the list of destinations allowed and for asymptomatic, asymptomatic quarantine facilities and other details, we have made revisions to make this playbook more feasible. On December the 13th, the second edition of the playbook was officially released followed by six briefings to respond to specific concerns of various stakeholders. Third, basic principles of the playbook. There are six principles in the playbook. First, vaccination. Vaccination is a key means to reduce the risk of infection and ensure safety. With the exception of a number of athletes and team officials who are exempted due to medical reasons, all Olympic-related personnel need to complete full vaccination at least 14 days before they come to China to be exempted from quarantine at designated facility and enter the closed loop. Given the complexity of the current COVID situation in the world, we especially recommend that all Olympic-related individuals to receive booster shots against COVID-19. Second, closed loop management. Closed loop management is a special management method. The Olympic related individuals in the closed loop and the staff serving foreign visitors directly are required to undergo daily health monitoring and NAT and stay in the closed loop hotels or the Winter Olympic villages. They are only allowed to take dedicated vehicles to and from closed loop sites and are not allowed to meet people outside the loop, still less the general public. Third, establishing a COVID-19 liaison officer mechanism. All international organizations coming to Beijing for the Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games need to appoint a COVID-19 liaison officer the responsibility of the officer is to maintain close contact with the members of their delegation, ensure that they understand the playbook, assist them in completing the preparations before coming to China, and carry out coordination work, for example, in epidemic emergency response. Fourth, test, trace and isolate principle. During the games, people in the closed loop will receive an AT test daily. If test or retest positive, they will be quarantined or treated. Following the standards of epidemiological survey and close contact recognition in the playbook, we will trace the case, locate close contacts, and take decisive measures to cut the chain of transmission. Fifth, reduce contact. In crowded spaces with poor ventilation, there is a greater risk of infection. The playbook stipulates that social activities should be minimized, masks should be worn at all times, and prolonged stay in confined spaces, crowds gathering, and close contact should be minimized. Sixth, raising awareness of hygiene. 
Olympic-related visitors to China need to wear N95, KN95, FFF, FFP2 masks without breathing valve or medical protective masks of the same standard throughout their stay in China. They need to wash their hands and disinfect frequently and use hand sanitizer. It is recommended to applaud for the athletes instead of singing and shouting. It is recommended to use less shared items or disinfect them before use. Rooms should be ventilated regularly to maintain good air circulation. Friends from the press. The Games is just around the corner. To control the pandemic and ensure the safety of the Games and personnel, we will do the following. First, we will step up publicity and training. We will ask uh, IOC, IPC and National Olympic Committees to hold training sessions for COVID liaison officers and other Olympic-related individuals visiting China. We will also conduct training for Olympic-related staff in host cities so that they can master the protocols and follow them strictly. Second, we will improve the working mechanism. We will establish a consultation mechanism between Chinese and foreign medical and epidemic prevention experts, improve the communication and coordination mechanism of COVID-19 liaison officers, and strengthen emergency response coordination in and outside the loop to ensure that all measures are implemented. Third, we will form synergy between uh, the internal and external of the closed loop. Based on the epidemic prevention system of Beijing and Hebei as host cities, we will form synergy in and outside the loop, build an integrated system of operation to ensure safety. Friends, it is only 43 days to go before the opening of the Winter Games. All preparations have been basically completed. We hope that all participants will understand the importance of the COVID protocols and strictly abide by them. With strong support of the Chinese people and the international community, we are confident and determined to present a streamlined, safe and splendid Olympic Games to the world. To conclude, I welcome friends from the press to continue to follow, support and participate in the preparations for the Winter Games. Thank you. Thank you, Director Han. And now the floor is open to questions. Please announce your media affiliation before asking questions. With CCTV, my question is about the second edition of the Epidemic Prevention Playbook for the Winter Games are released recently. What are the new regulations compared with the first edition? Will additional measures be put in place before and during the Games? Thank you for your question. And I think many friends from the press might be interested in this question because the two editions are actually released in very close dates. So compared with the first edition, the second edition is basically consistent in the basic principles, the framework, the major measures. So we mainly did some revision and improvement in terms of specific measures mainly in three aspects. First, we have some new relevant COVID-19 countermeasures. For example, we have increased the requirement on Chinese staff and the key information on epidemiological survey and the policy of athletes participating 
in the game as spectators. And we provide more detailed requirements in the second edition. For example, um, athletes designated as close contact before the game and the retest for people testing positive and the process of setting up new NAT testing agencies abroad. And we also have new requirements for the medical exemption and with history of infection. For example, a priority for many people is a flight booking, and this is stated in the second edition. As for the standard of service for accommodation and transportation, we also have further detailed information in the second edition. And we have uh, updated some information as well. The time for nucleic acid test and the way of sampling and the list of destinations allowed for all stakeholders and we have listed all the destinations allowed in the second edition of the playbook as for whether additional measures will be put in place before and during the games it depends on the changes of COVID situation in and outside China because now we see the huge harm caused by the Omicron variant we will follow closely the epidemic situation and we need to respect professional opinion of medical experts and work with IOC and IPC to ensure dynamic adjustments to COVID-19 protocols. Only in that way can we address the risks and challenges brought by COVID-19. Thank you. Next question, please. With Beijing TV, according to the second edition of the playbook, what are the requirements on the entry and exit of personnel and how will the closed loop management be enforced? Uh, what will be the health monitoring measures and how to conduct effective NAT tests? Thank you for your question. This is quite specific. And the stakeholders have play, paid great attention to these questions. Now I will ask my colleague to answer your questions. Actually, you raised four specific questions concerning remote prevention, the closed-loop management, and other factors. In terms of the first question, how to ensure remote control of those personnel who plan to enter China, these people need to download my 2022 app 14 days before departure to China. And they also need to get fully vaccinated at least 14 days before departure for China. Number three, they need to conduct two COVID tests 96 hours before entering China. Number four, for those who have infected with COVID, they need to submit relevant documents to the organizing committee. And if the recovery is, and they need to submit relevant documents to the organizing committee at least eight working days before departure for China. If the recovery is within 30 days of departure, 
Then, apart from taking two COVID tests within 96 hours of departure, the person also needs also needs to provide negative results from two tests with a 24 hours internal after recovery. So, this is how we will conduct remote prevention. The first, the second question is about closed loop management. Just now, my colleague talked about the importance of such management, which is a key measure for the Winter Games. Specific requirements have been listed in a playbook for all those personnel. They need to be su submit. They need to be subject for. Uh, closed loop ma management throughout their trip in China. We have, we will arrange specific winter Olympic buses for the personnel to transport them from their hotels, venues, and other places of the games. And the personnel should not step out of the closed loop and cannot contact with the general public. This is our bottom line. So for all those personnel within the closed loop, they need to strictly follow relevant requirements. This is how we will ensure the smooth functioning of the games. You also talk about health monitoring. As a matter of fact, health monitoring needs to be conducted on a daily basis, both before coming to China and after entering China. The personnel need to take the initiative to monitor their health and upload relevant conditions. They need to monitor their health in the following ways. They need to take their temperature. They need to see whether they have uh, sore throats or other symptoms. This is how the personnel will conduct health monitoring. The next question is about how to ensure the convenient and timely uh, COVID-19 uh, tests. COVID tests are very important for those within the closed loop. We will conduct tests on them every day so as to ensure that we will find those positive cases and then cut off the transmission chain. This will be an effective way to fight COVID-19. We have also taken account of the fact that relevant tests should not have negative influence on their preparations for the games. So we have made very specific arrangements in the Olympic Village, in the hotels and other places of the Games, we have set up the test stations. And the hours are quite long, from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, the people within the closed loop may take the tests. And they do not need to uh, pre-book any time slot for the test. If the sampling is conducted, between 6 a.m. and 12 a.m., then they can get the results at 8 p.m. And if the sampling is conducted between 12 p.m. and 11 p.m., then they will get the results at 6 a.m. of the following day. As long as if no response is given to the personnel, then the result will be considered as negative. These are my answers to your questions. Thank you. Next question, please. Thank you. According to the playbook, athletes are encouraged to take the jabs. Do they have to take the booster shot? Uh, for those who have applied for medical immunity, how to ensure sound management of them. Thank you for your question. This is quite a professional question, and I would like to invite Director Huang Chun to answer this question. Thank you. 
and now people around the world are getting vaccinated. It is proven that vaccines are effective ways to reduce the risk of transmission for COVID-19. And it is a key measure for a safe game. That's why our playbook stipulates that with the exception of athletes and team officials who are exempted from vaccination due to very special medical reasons, we require all other stakeholders to complete the whole process of vaccination in China, uh, uh, before they come to China or they uh, will be under quarantine for 21 days. We have communicated with IOC and reached consensus based on the uncertainty of COVID-19 situation in the world, as well as the spread of Omicron new variant, we strongly suggest all individuals, including athletes, to receive booster shots before coming to China. Many countries have responded positively to that and uh, vaccinated uh, their athletes. We worked with IOC, IPC and experts to set a strict standard for medical exemption. We have uh, relevant descriptions in the playbook. It is only limited to a very limited number of athletes and team officials. We believe that this group will cherish this opportunity to participate in Winter Games and they will protect themselves well and strictly abide by the COVID-19 protocols, providing themselves and others at the same time and contributing to a safe game. Thank you. Next question, please. Cover news. Now, CU in Beijing test game is concluding, and the uh, COVID protocols are conducted according to the uh, standards that will be adopted during the games. What are the feedbacks? Thank you for your question. This is a very good question. As we know that since October the 5th, the organizing committee has conducted a series of international test matches. And we have followed very strict requirements in terms of remote prevention control, closed loop management, COVID tests, and health monitoring. We have followed the requirements as closely as if we are having during the games. Before boarding for China, there are some athletes who have tested positive, and according to the playbook, the COVID cases did not get on board for China. And as the personnel into China, they have found someone who have tested positive, and then following relevant requirements and rules. We send them to designated hospitals and get isolated at specific venues. According to the playbook, the close contacts can be allowed to join training at matches under, clo under strict conditions. And some close contacts even got their best personal performance and even one gold medal and they are very satisfied with their performance. So from this we can tell that the first version of the playbook has stood the test of the games and with the support of various stakeholders Epidemic control in various venues have been conducted smoothly. So in this way, the first version has stood the test. 
if if there are some positive cases, they have been handled in a rapid and effective manner, and there was no transmission of the epidemic. The COVID policies have resonated well with the athletes, coaches, and overseas media. Thank you. With South China Morning Post, if there are infections at uh, within a close loop, how to ensure that they will not be transmitted to the Beijing community? You mentioned uh, what will happen if cases were detected during the games. So against the backdrop of COVID-19, we will see, we will likely to see a small scale of infections. The risk of transmission is quite high, but we are fully prepared for that. We have a whole set of plan for that. If someone tests positive, we have several measures to take. If it's an asymptomatic case, the individual will be sent to a designated facility for quarantine. Uh, in Beijing, all of the positive cases will be sent to hospital, but for three competition zones, uh, they all have dedicated quarantine facilities. But if they are symptomatic, they will be sent to a designated hospital, to very experienced medical institutions. As for whether these cases can participate in games, Temporarily, they cannot participate in the games. But according to the standards of them to be cured, we have set some conditions. If they Test negative in two NAT tests, 24 hours apart, they will be released from the quarantine and continue with their work and competition. But uh, some small restrictions might also be applied to them. As for symptomatic cases, if the temperature has gone down and see their lung image going back to normal. And if they test negative for two tests 24 hours apart, they will be released from the quarantine and they may continue to with their work or participate in the game. As for close contacts of the cases, we take international standards, WHO standards, and the standards of the Beijing Olympic Games to recognize close contacts. They will be sent for quarantine for And uh, during the Winter Olympic Games, we have relevant policies for close contacts. They need to stay in their room, and we will send meals to them, and they will have dedicated vehicles. But they will take twice NAT tests daily.
as for the close contacts. If they test negative, they can continue with their work and participate in the games. As for the impact on the city, we attach great importance to this issue. To prevent transmission from within the closed loop to the city at large, especially for the Omicron variant, we need to keep the bottom line. This is one of our priorities. If we strictly implement the closed loop management NAT test to avoid the break of closed loop, we are confident that we will be able to control the transmission to the city. Thank you. Next question, please. With CGTN. As we know that NHL has announced yesterday that they will not send athletes to China due to COVID-19, will there be an adjustment to COVID-19 protocols to make it easier for foreign athletes to come to China? Mr. Huang will answer this question as well. Thank you for your question. I noted relevant report yesterday. Indeed, as you said, NHL announced that they will not, the athletes will not participate in the games, and we feel regret about that. In terms of the COVID policy of the Winter Games, actually they have been jointly formulated by IOC, IPC, and Beijing Organizing Committee. And we published two versions, one on October the 25th and the other on December the 23rd. Relevant COVID response measures listed in the playbooks are based on the latest scientific results, the expert opinions, as well as on international experience. The use of the playbooks have also stood the test of the test matches. And the use and requirements of the playbooks have proven to be effective and have been highly recognized by the participants. We are convinced that these COVID response measures will effectively reduce the risk of transmission. It will ensure that the athletes and other personnel will join the training and the games in a safe and convenient manner and ensure the health and safety of the Chinese public. Thank you. Thank you, with Xinhua News Agency. The Winter Games cover three competition zones, how to ensure medical treatment during the Games. This is a very important question. I'll ask Mr. Li to answer this question. Thank you for your question. Medical treatment is of vital importance. Beijing municipal government has followed relevant requirements of the Olympic Health Care Guide and FIC Health Care Guide to make relevant regulations. We have followed the principle of making the Games streamlined, safe, and splendid. And we have also prepared uh, targeted, safe, and efficient medical treatment. Number one, we have improved the allocation and preparation of the medical resources. We have set up fixed medical stations, venue medical stations, and medical stations for the audience. 
In Beijing and Yanqing competition zones, we have a total of 88 medical stations to provide on-site medical treatment as well as the distribution for the patients. And we have chosen from 17 designated hospitals and two emergency response institutions. Uh, we have uh, uh, chosen 1,140 medical workers from these hospitals to provide medical suppo support. We have also chosen 120 medical workers from 12 Tier 3 hospitals to work as standby medical force. We have also uh, prepared 74 ambulances, including 54 negative pressure ambulances. And we have also five types of injured personnel, including COVID-19 uh, cases and suspected cases, uh, fever cases within the close management loop, other injured personnel within the close management, uh, within the closed loop, fever patients within the closed loop, and uh, other injured personnel within the closed loop. These are the five types of patients and injured personnel that we have designated, and they will be provided with tailored medical support and treatment. And after the start of the games, we will choose 1,188 medical workers, 840 experts to provide timely and efficient medical services. Meanwhile, we have also prepared 60 uh, city level experts and 10 academicians to provide high standard te technical support. Number two, based on the conditions and characteristics of the hospitals and venues, we have prepared tailored medical support. For example, we have prepared medical workers of orthopedics and stomatology. And at the ice hockey venues, we have prepa prepared CT and teeth chair and other equipment. We have also conducted various drills to ensure the targeted and tailored medical support. Our designated hospitals have also drawn up their tailored medical support plan. For example, the third hospital of at the Yanjing Hospital of Peking University, third number three hospital, have uh, prepared 12,000 square meters of wards, which can provide comprehensive medical support. The Beijing Anjing Hospital have used 104 medical beds as the independent zone for the games. The Peking University People's Hospital, Beijing Chongyang Hospital, Be Beijing Shijitan Hospital have also prepared specific zones for the games. They have also established negative pressure operating rooms to provide strong support. Number three, we have strengthened comprehensive clinics within the Olympic vi Village. The comprehensive uh, clinic in the village is 1,500 square meters, and at the Yanqing zone, the clinic is 1,658 square meters, and they cover eight, 18 medical disciplines, including imaging, TCM, and um, orthopedics. At the moment, the comprehensive clinics have uh, completed uh, their adjustment, and they are fully prepared for the games. These clinics can provide emergency response, outpatient and recovery, uh, as well as other services during the games. Number four, we have strengthened training and blood supply. We have provided the medical workers with a strong uh, training in terms of the Olympic knowledge, English skills, and skiing skills. The 40 skiing doctors have all met international standards. 1,900 medical workers have the basic emergency response skills. The Red Cross Blood Center have established a relevant mechanism 
and they will make sure that the Rh negative blood will be kept at 1,800 to 2,000 units. The Beijing municipal government will coordinate medical resources across the city to provide high-quality and efficient medical support. Thank you. Just now, Mr. Li gave you a briefing on the medical uh, preparations. From this, you can tell that uh, we are ready to provide sound medical support uh, based on the uh, features of the Winter Games. There is a big possibility for the athletes and other personnel to get injured. Having said that, there are very strict requirements and standards for medical treatment, treatment in such international competitions. Some journalists may wonder that uh, there is a slow response to provide medical support. However, there would be very strict international standards to provide medical support. For example, the uh, medical workers of the teams will provide the first response, and they will decide how to uh, deal with the injury. And after the judgment of the team doctors, then the response emergency response teams will provide other support. In particular, once there is injury, the matches needs need to be stopped for a moment in order to prevent any secondary injuries. So we hope that the journalists will understand the procedures and standards of medical support, and our medical team will follow relevant international rules and standards to provide medical support. And they will make sure that the medical support will be of satisfaction. This is what I want to add here, because previously we found some different approaches in terms of medical support. We hope that you will continue to follow our work. So this is a way to disseminate, uh, to, 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 to help us better understand the uh, procedures and standards. Next question, please. I'm from Japan. My question is about the audience. In what venues and in what events will there be audience? How many audience will there be? When will the tickets be sold? And what kind of uh, COVID response requirements will be uh, provided? This question is of great interest to many, given the global COVID-19 situation. The situation is still severe and complex to prevent the spread of the virus and ensure the safety of all participants. We have released, uh, we have decided not to sell tickets to overseas audiences and we have announced that decision. As for domestic audiences, we are making plans on that and we will release relevant information in due course. Please uh, refer to the information that will be released through official channels. We will stay in close communication with the IOC and determine our ticketing uh, policies for domestic audiences in light of the COVID-19 situation as well as COVID-19 protocols. And uh, I would suggest you to get information through official channels. And this is uh, my answer to this question. Next question, please. From South Metropolitan, if there's a positive case, will there be an adjustment of policies? 
Mr. Huang will answer this question. A similar question has been asked, and I have offered uh, some information already, but uh, I am ready to answer this one as well. So what if uh, someone tests positive or even we see a cluster of cases? We believe um, this is highly likely because there will be a concentration of people at the games. We have a plan to respond to that situation. During the test events, we have fully tested the plan. And if someone tests positive, asymptomatic or symptomatic, where should they be sent to for quarantine or treatment? Uh, I have offered some information on that. As for whether there will be an impact on a schedule. We believe that on the general cases, uh, there will be no adjustments if no cluster transmission is detected. We need to stay in IOC, stay with co in contact with IOC um, to see whether we need to make adjustments on the schedule. As for uh, close contacts, standards, and requirements, under the general principle of COVID-19 control, there will not be a significant influence on the close contacts participating in the game, but there are exceptions. Uh, for example, if within the six hours before the games, someone tests negative, they are allowed to continue their work. As for other stakeholders besides athletes, if their tasks and work are not essential and can be replaced by others, and uh, we need to apply the quarantine policies of the city and send them um, to quarantine hotels. When it is highly likely that we will see new infections during the games, we hope that all participants, including our domestic staff, can abide by the COVID-19 protocol strictly to ensure a smooth and safe game. Thank you. Next question, please. In the interest of time, uh, maybe the last question, please. from Hong Kong. We noticed that in the second edition of Playbook, we noticed that the first point of arrival need to be the Capital International Airport. The airport has quite a large traffic of passengers. Will there be an impact on other passengers' travel? And what will be the measures to transport these people from airport to hotels? I think this is a good question that the general public is interested in. Thank you. Many friends also asked me this question. Um, will there be an impact on the other passengers traveling at the Beijing Capital International Airport? As you know that this airport is the biggest one in China it has a strong ability of handling passenger traffic. Since the start of COVID-19, the airport has accumulated much experience in dealing with relevant situation. They have been the primary arrival spot for a period of time. And the team at the airport is very capable and experienced. And the facilities and the structure of the airport, and as well as the process for dealing with such situation, is already very mature. 
for Winter Olympic Games. They have uh, set up dedicated spaces and routes for Olympic related personnel. At the airport is quite close to the three competition zones with convenient transportation connections. So we can make sure that they have a good experience traveling between the venues to avoid anxiety from long time traveling. Because we have a complete closed loop, the ordinary uh, travelers, they can feel very reassured because the safety outside the closed loop is absolutely guaranteed. As for how they travel from airport to hotel, we will have dedicated vehicles to send them to the Olympic villages and hotels. And from hotel to airport, we also have dedicated vehicles to specialized zone to go through their procedures. So it's a, a whole closed loop and very safe. The Chinese people will feel that they will not have uh, cross contact with people traveling to China for Olympics. And this, uh, we believe, is the right choice. Thank you. Thank you for your participation in today's press briefing. And this is the end of today's event. Thank you.